Hello, hello. Today I wanted to talk a little more in depth about my journey to body peace. Um, I recently did a workshop about my journey to body peace and my blog, Stop Hating Your Body. And I just want to like go over on YouTube things that I went over in my workshop. I believe that if we were never burdened with societal pressures or comparing ourselves with other people and bullying, that we might have never given our bodies a second thought. I didn't think about my body or my aesthetic until I was 10 years old. Um, today, kids as young as five are already insecure about their bodies and even going on diets. My rude awakening came at a dinner with my dad. I just graduated elementary school and I was in a really pretty white dress and I had my hair all done. I was feeling pretty great. And up until that point, I'd never really thought about my body or what I looked like. And I got picked on at school. I wasn't part of the popular crowd. I felt pretty isolated and um, when I was a kid I was learning English too. Spanish was my first language so you know school, school and social life was a little bit difficult, a little tricky. So I was having dinner with my dad and it was just the two of us and I remember so vividly what happened. He was looking at his menu and I just remember feeling like super high, euphoric. I'm like, yay, I'm going to go to a new school and things are going to be different now. It, 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 I just felt really great. And I remember he looked down from his menu and he had this look of disappointment on his face. He shook his head and he said to me, oh, Annie, one day when I make enough money, I'm going to get you a nose job and smash. The glass was shattered. <laughs> oh, I'm ugly. And being confronted by this idea that I was ugly, it took a huge toll on my anxiety. Every single day, going through school, was just heart-pounding moments of thinking that everyone was holding in their vomit at the sight of me. It was an instant. It wasn't like the second my dad told me that, that I immediately thought that, but the confrontation of the idea that I was ugly, it just snowballed into, into how I felt about myself. Because I'd never thought about what I looked like, and I realized that the reason that people probably didn't like me as a child was probably because I was so horrific to look at. I didn't think I was worth anything as a human being. I didn't think I deserved to exist. And this didn't necessarily only have to do with how I felt about my appearance, but my home life became very hard and very dark um, as the years passed. And it definitely triggered my depression um, and my body dysmorphic disorder. I couldn't really see myself in mirrors. Um, what I saw was more like a hallucination, like the carnival mirrors. I saw what I typically describe as like a giant caramel colored rhinoceros. Like I just saw a really huge nose. Um, and uh, really big arms, a giant stomach that I thought people thought that maybe I was pregnant. I had that idea in my head. I just, everything was just a lot bigger in my imagination than it really was. And it's not something that you really get over. I may never really know what I really look like. Um, and most people don't. That's okay. Um, we, we don't really know what we look like because all we ever get to see is pictures and our reflection, and those aren't exact. That's that's not exactly what we look like, so we may never know, and that's okay. 
So this whole experience that I'm describing, it's called body dysmorphic disorder. And in short, you call it BDD. It's a psychological disorder um, in which a person becomes obsessed with imaginary defects in their appearance. So the symptoms are, you know, pr a preoccupation with your physical appearance. It's an obsession. It takes up time in your daily life. Um, you frequently examine yourself in mirrors, or you may avoid all mirrors. It's one of the extremes. Um, you have a strong belief that you have an abnormality or a defect in your appearance that makes you ugly. Avoiding social situations, feeling the need to stay isolated or housebound, the need to seek validation and reassurance from other people, frequent attempts to change your appearance, and usually without any kind of success, um, or and without the feeling of success because you don't see the changes that you would like to see. And the list goes on. I recently read the risk factors for BDD and I thought they were pretty interesting. You may have biological relatives with body dysmorphic disorder, um, negative life experiences such as childhood teasing, um, personality traits including low self-esteem, societal pressures and expectations of beauty or having another psychiatric disorder such as anxiety or depression and that's me I do have both anxiety and depression and so remember that because I'm gonna come back to that in just a second um at the end of my sophomore year of college I was a few months away from being 20 uh, and so far year 19 of my life had been one of the darker years of my life. There's been a few dark years and 19 was a big, like, there were great highs and there were very low lows, so it was, it was a hard year. That year I had a conversation with one of my professors that I will never forget, in which she confronted me and asked me if I could look at myself in the mirror and tell myself that I was worth it. And I sincerely couldn't. That day, she wouldn't let me leave her office until I broke down and the words came out. It was after this that I decided to leave school and focus on mental health and my body image. So my recovery process began. So as I mentioned before, one of the risk factors for BDD is our societal pressure to be beautiful. Our culture, our media, all of it perpetuates that beauty is status and without it we are worthless. We have to demand better. A couple of videos um, I found on YouTube actually early on really helped open my eyes about how we are influenced by the visuals that surround us. One of them was Killing Us Softly 4, which I can link you to, um, and another film I was truly inspired by was Misrepresentation. That one really like hit me in so many ways. Just hear about how women are represented in media and how it affects us, how it affects our self-esteem and how it affects our success and what we can achieve. I'd really appreciate if you would check those videos out. You don't have to, but they would definitely help further this discussion, this conversation. Um, and as a call to action, I ask that you use your voices to call out objectification and harmful gender stereotypes when you see them. Use social media to amplify your voice and be critical of the media. We must demand better representation for ourselves as women, as people of color, as queer and trans individuals, as disabled individuals. We deserve visibility. We deserve to be seen. Our stories deserve to be told and in a proper representation of ourselves, not as some stereotype, some joke, or some one-dimensional idea that somebody may have of us. 
although I think media and subsequently our culture plays a pivotal role in our body image, I believe it is possible to achieve a sense of body peace even in such a toxic environment. First, I had to humbly accept that everything I was taught had the potential to be wrong. I had to be willing to accept that my thoughts were conditioned thoughts and there were things I needed to unlearn and things that I needed to relearn. So I observed open dialogue about body image, body autonomy, and self-esteem. I watched documentaries, I read articles and blogs, and I researched a lot. I also took a lot of time and recorded in writing and video journal entries on YouTube um, my observations and thoughts, and I found communities of people online on the same journey, going through the same thing. And that was very validating. That was a really important part about this whole journey. I will continue to discuss this, and I'm going to separate them into smaller videos that I will link here, maybe all around here, I'm not sure how many I will have at the end of this, but be sure to click all the links and watch through the whole thing um, or if you just want to talk about a particular topic you can go to that video um, and I will link them in the description below as well um, and I will see you guys at the end of all this <laughs> or eventually. <laughs>